Hey everybody, hope you're all well and welcome back. Hopefully it's going to be a quick one. This is an Amiga power supply. I actually did a video about this, one of these before, um, where I opened it up and did a sort of a kind of trying to back engineer it. This one's come off of uh, eBay and it's not working at all. I've checked the fuse in the plug and I've put, uh, checked the, um, the 5 volts and the 12 volts on this with no load on it and it's absolutely dead as a door now. Now the main problem with these is actually how you get into them. This is the older heavy power supply and it can only do about two and a half amps on the five volt rail, one amp on the 12 volt rail and 0.1 amps on the minus 12 volt rail. These are like plastic and I think what I'm gonna try and do here is to screw a screw into this and then try and pull the whole lot out. So there's one. So that's one way to get the feet out. Okay, so we're in, um, let's just see. This doesn't look great, it looks like it's had something spilt on it. I'm hoping transformer coil hasn't shorted, because if it has, that is game over. The fuse is gone. Okay, we've got one screw in here. And then these actually also hold the transformer in. So we get this out. So on this side of the transformer, we've got a short, which is one coil. There's no short from one coil to the other coil, which is good. And here we've got a center tapped uh, secondary winding din. So this is a primary winding, secondary winding. Okay, so what's wrong with this power supply? Well, um, before we work that out, I'll just give you a quick skim over of how it works. So the mains comes in, it goes through a switch, and it goes through a little, um, a couple of uh, suppression caps um, and, a, and a fuse. And then it goes straight to the primary of this transformer. This transformer then steps it down to around, I think, about 15 volts. And on the secondary, there's a center tap. So it's one winding with uh, ground in the middle. It's rectified by these two diodes that you can just about see hiding down there because there's a center tap. So when one's positive, that side charges. When the other side's positive, that side charges. And that sits in this capacitor here. This capacitor here serves as the main ballast cap for all the rails. So this is kind of the rectified VCC source, if you like, for all the other rails. From there, you've got a plus 12 and a plus 5 volt. The simplest one is the plus 12 volts, which is this one here with its heatsink on it. It's got its own little ballast cap here, which is bleeding off of this. 7812 regulator, a cap on the output, and a little diode on the output. Not sure why. The minus 12 volts is slightly different in that this cap here is it's got a diode on it uh, here. You can just about see it down there. And what that does is it makes this, this cap charge negative because the positive of this cap's on ground and so it charges more and more negative, the negative terminal of this cap to minus 15 volts and then this 7912 regulator steps it down to minus 12 volts and it's got its own little cap on the output, same thing. So the, the plus 5 volt rail, which is the most probably complicated, Again, the main ballast cap is here, which is what feeds it, the reservoir cap. But it's then chopped through this transistor from this cap, uh, controlled by this switch mode chip here, uh, which is sensing the output current and the output voltage. It's taking this reservoir and chopping it through this transistor, out through this inductor, into this cap, and it's rectified by this big beefy diode here. So it's sitting in this cap as positive 5 volt. And this is a silicone controlled rectifier which I think acts as a crowbar. If the over if there's an over voltage uh, condition, it just shunts out the 5 volt rail. Why is the fuse blown? Actually, let's put it on continuity mode. Let's see if there's anything beeps at us. And look at that. One of the diodes is short. One of the diodes is short on the uh, main rectifier. Let's have a look at this one. That one's short as well. So this is primary winding, secondary winding, center tapped on ground. This is the ground plane here. And then this is one winding, but it's got the ground is tied to the middle. So each side of this, the way I think about it, is each side of this is flipping polarity respected to ground because the mains is, you know, AC. So it's stepping it down to say, I don't know, 15 volts, something like that, uh, AC and the center tap there. So one AC goes there, one AC goes there. And the diodes go there and there. And the idea of them is to only let it go one way. So when it ends up here, which is what's sitting in that cap here, 
it should be it's going to be a bit higher than 15 because it's the peak of the wave that's accumulating each time it's going to be about 20 volts that's a 25 volt cap so it should be 20 volts sitting in there but what we've got here is apparently we've got a short between the AC and uh, the positive and the other AC and the positive so really that should be showing me a diode drop and only letting it in one way but it's not doing that the other thing that could be is we we got a cat sitting here which is showing short now that is this big cap here and it looks a bit domed actually maybe not too bad but it's very very old and it looks a bit domed so what I'm going to think I'm going to do is I'm going to lift these two diodes and lift this cap and we'll see how we go see if the short's gone away no short no short I wonder if this cap was short yes it was that would blow the fuse why would it blow the fuse because this is basically now a wire if that was effectively just a wire then what you've gone and done is bridged the um, the output all of the outputs to ground so what that would do is it would suck a hell of a lot of power through the transformer and blow the fuse which is what the fuse is there for so this diode this is the main rectification diode 5.371 way that appears okay so that was a false that was a red herring so although it looked like the um, looked like these diodes were short that was misleading because what was actually happening is this capacitor had turned into a wire which had linked the ground to the uh, positive VCC because the ground is already linked to each side of this coil that's just another bit of wire effectively v, uh, AC each side, ground and VCC were all, all linked bang, the fuse blow these are really good, these are about 5 off eBay component tester and you can see there's nothing wrong with that diode I'll just quickly check the other one there you go, there's nothing wrong with that diode either. So I think all that was wrong with it was that capacitor. Quickly testing the main transistor because I've had to take it off to clean this. A bit of a part way update from the fast forwarding. So far, this cap's useless, and these two are under, and they were to do with the 12 volt and minus 12 volt rails and the main ballast cap. Uh, I'm going to swap out this cap, measured okay. It's very light, but it's 6.3 volts, and the, the rail's 5 volts. I'm just going to put a 16 volt on there, brand new. I've plugged it in the wall but not turned it on, so I'm going to plug it on here. So I'm away from it now, and turn it on. Nothing went bang. You can see I've got 5 volts on the 5 volt rail now. So I've got 12 volts there. You can see I've got minus 15 volts. That probably doesn't look too clever. So actually, we've got a problem here. We've got plus 5 and we've got plus 12. But the minus 12 is actually minus 15. So I'm going to lift that regulator too. And I'm also, because I've done all the others, I'm just going to swap out the cap next to the 7912 as well. I've changed the capacitor on the minus 12 volt rail from a 330 to a 470. And now, lo and behold, I've got minus 12 volts. Okay, so I've plugged it all into an Amiga um, and we have a working system. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you all soon. Cheers, bye.